It seems today that everyone is interested in artificial intelligence, self-driving cars, and of course, sentient toasters. So we're going to explore self-driving cars. But first, I'm going to need to build a road. My first attempts at road building led to this terrifying monstrosity. However, I eventually sorted the lines to be perpendicular and of even length so that I could create a boundary for the road. But my artistic skill leaves an awful lot to be desired. So instead, I decided to create an ellipse. To create the ellipse around a center, I used this function where we set the major axis, which is the longest distance across the ellipse, and the minor axis, which is the shortest distance. These axes are then used to generate a series of points 360 degrees around the center and return these points as our path. We are using the major axis for the X component, so the ellipse will be stretched along the X axis. Let's see what this looks like. And then we add the boundaries. Now we could just place an object on the path and iterate around the ellipse. However, there's no guidance or driving going on, so we're going to need to build a car. Okay, so we have our image for the car, but now we need to create a car class. In this class, we're gonna have usual things like its position and direction, just those properties associated with an object. And we're also going to have something called a max angle. And that's basically going to be the maximum angle that the vehicle can turn in one frame. We're also going to have some rays initialized, and this is the same ray object that we created and used in the previous video, about making a backrooms game. So if you want to have a little bit more look at that, you can go and have a look there, or you can find this code all on my GitHub. And then we have an update method, which will be called each frame, where we update the position of the car, the rays with respect to all of the walls or barriers that are around us, and we update the guidance. So what actually goes on there? Well, we're going to ignore these first two parts. The update position is just pretty much a, a straightforward trigonometric function where we take the previous position and use direction and speed to update it. The update rays just calls the rays own update method on each ray that we have. So then we can have a look at this update guidance function, where the first thing we do is we find out which ray is the longest. Is it the ray pointed to the left, pointed to the right, or straight ahead? And depending on which ray is the longest, we then have a little bit of a random change in our angle, where if we are pointing to the left, then the update for the maximum angle is somewhere between zero or the negative of the maximum angle. So we're gonna tilt the car off to the left because the longest ray is to the left so we know there's plenty of room to drive. If we're in the middle, it's just got a bit of flexibility between either left or right. And if we're to the right, it directs us to the right. So let's see how this performs. And there we go. You can see that it's driving itself around this ellipse. However, it's really hugging one side. We're not helping it get directed back to the center. There's no emphasis on that event occurring. Basically, the, the forward position is nearly always the longest ray. So how can we remedy that? So within our update guidance function, we can make a small update to the direction control where if the max index is equal to one so if that straight forward ray is the longest ray we then take into account the difference between the two rays on either side so that we bias the direction to be helping us get back to the center now it's working beautifully now we can alter the speed of this vehicle and its ability to turn and you can see they're going much faster around the track. But sometimes altering these things can lead to strange events, such as the car escaping the road. I could try a bunch of different speeds and turning capabilities and record the performance of the car over a number of cycles. Then we could analyze this to just determine the behavioural characteristics of our really simple little car. 
So I took all of the data from each of those runs and calculated the number of failure events or when the car would move off the track for each speed at each different value of turning. And this is just plotted here. And a couple of things are really obvious straight away. As we increase the speed, we get higher failure rates for these lower turning. So basically, slower is safer. Thank you, Captain Obvious. The other thing that we can also note is that higher turning, so as we're able to turn more readily, we can cope with higher speeds. We have a greater ability to carry out a correction. This is critical failure data. So it's only telling us when a full failure event occurred, the car left the track. How can we see the differences within the stability of performance for each of these three, for example, where they look practically identical, there's no failures. Well, we can create a plot that looks like this, where we're actually looking at the distance for the left and the right ray. This is at speed equal to one. So remember all of the driving at one, we had no events or no failures where the car left the track. But here it's super clear to see that at a, a turning of only two, the car is struggling a great deal more with having to overcompensate as it's driving even at this low speed and yet when we have a turning equal to five the compensation is really clear the car doesn't struggle to stay in the center of that track at all it's very rarely having any difference between the left and the right ray so this is a much more stable vehicle than this so now we've had a good look into how our car behaves at different speeds and different turning values let's build a fun track and see how this car performs So here you can see me manually drawing out the boundary mask, which won't actually be visible in the final plot, but that's how the car will navigate. And here's the car, and you can see it's starting to drive round, but there are quite a lot of issues with how it's behaving. And one of them is it kind of gets trapped in a bit of a minima, where it's found a viable route around the map and it's just going to cycle it. There's obviously some more randomness in how it's moving, so it's never taking exactly the same path, but the visualization we're getting is that it's basically cycling. So these are all things that I'd kind of like to have a look at in a future video where we add more random motion and actually allow the car to have much more freedom unless it's getting too close to a wall. And then also you can see it's wiggling. And that wiggle is because it's updating every frame. And it doesn't actually need to do that. Maybe you could update every 10 frames or so instead of every frame. And I'd also like to have a little explore of speed control. If you like this project, why not subscribe and leave me a comment with what you liked or indeed potential improvements. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.